All right, guys, I am back, and we are going to continue on with the collection videos since, uh, well, quite frankly, since USPS can't seem to get their crap together and deliver stuff. So anyway, um, one, of the, one of the things since I did the Benchmade um, collection, um, and I think I did another one for that, one of the things people asked for is to, to continue doing collections, and, and let's see some other ones, and Spyderco was requested among some others, so I figure we'll jump into the Spyderco section, we'll jump around to, to different brands as we go. People often ask, do you like Spyderco? Because I don't show Spyderco very often, but I, I do like Spyderco, I just, I think a lot of their designs are very derivative of other designs that they already have. But I do have a handful of Spydercos in my collection, so we will look at them. And there's just a couple, a few examples here in front of you right now of different Spyderco models that I have. So we're going to jump right in to the Spyderco collection. This will only be a one video collection. We won't have to spread it out like the Benchmade ones. We'll start with the little widgets right here, the dragonflies. I like the dragonflies, they're little tiny knives. Uh, this guy right here was actually called, was actually named the boob knife for quite a while because I had a good friend named Kelsey and she, uh, she carried this clipped in her bra for a while as like a, a, uh, a female defense knife. Um, and so I just let her carry it around for a little bit. Now I've got two of them here. They're the exact same thing except one is slightly different steel than the other so we'll just Put this guy down. This is the standard VG10 model. This is the ZDP um, 189. This is, you know, in they call British Racing Green, I think. This was a special one. This is incredibly tough steel. I really, I really do like it. I always intended to get something a little bit bigger than this, um, you know, in this steel. Um, but the Dragonflies are, I, for, the, for the price, for the size of the knife, though, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> for the standard size, though, it's not too bad. It's not too bad a knife um, just to have a little tiny blade. It's just, it's a little too small for me to ever really do anything with. But uh, after I got the, I got the ZDP 189 because I just really wanted to test out the steel and I liked it. And this is in a, a video going way back to 2012 when I got it while I was deployed. And then I got, you know, a regular one that I've used quite a bit, um, which is a, a significant difference in price, by the way, between the two. But the Dragonflies are the Dragonflies. They are. They're little, but they get the job done, I guess. Oh my god, look, I forgot one, guys. It's the Zome Green Dragonfly. See, I knew I, the little guy just got forgotten in the corner of, of the drawer. So it's just like the other dragonflies, except it's got this Zome Green um, camouflage looking little thing. Um, VG10 steel. It's just, you know, God, why did I order this one? I don't know. It's like a little camouflaginess. Um, another little dragonfly. Now the military, uh, the military is a big old knife. Um, this is the titanium version, which has a little bit of wear on it, as you can see. I like this. It's it's a nice. Well, I haven't carried it in a while. Normally, it's nice and snappy, um, but like every other knife, it's got some chinchilla dust because of where the knife drawers have been sitting. It's got a, a backspacer there, um, and you know, a couple barrels in there. Um, this one, you know what, I just realized you can't do anything with the clip. Weird. Um, but it's a, it's a good sturdy knife. It's got a long four inch blade or nearly four inch blade though, which is why they ended up coming out with the paramilitary series, um, for, you know, which also has the compression lock, not the liner lock. Um, but I always liked this knife. I got it from somebody, um, second hand, but it was still very, very good. I mean, excellent excellent knife wow this is so old this is when i was still using fluorinated grease as a as a knife lube and you can see some of it there that's how old it is since i did anything with this knife this has been sitting in the collection forever forever ever ever but so there's there's one right and i really like the military i like the size and i like the weight of it we've got three more that go with it um this is the m4 version which is pretty cool um, this is a, a, a Blade HQ exclusive, and then this is just a standard old S30V, um, you know, Digicam handle. And then this, now this should be a special edition. 
because of the, the tan handles, but it's not. I just got aftermarket tan handles to put on this thing because I didn't like the standard black. Uh, but now I had an orange one that I was I was redoing for somebody, but it just it, it, I ended up cutting the scales up to try to it just it I don't the things at the shop and in pieces. Um, but these things don't see the light of day, and um, yeah. But I've got so I mean a grand total of <clears throat> that's right. I and now I had another one of these. If you recall, there's a a video where I, I redid a custom, uh, I cut a, a wave opener into it, and um, I redid the clip for Tip Up Carry. I gave that to a fan, uh, Eric, who came all the way from Maryland to see me in the shop one day, and he had always said that he loved that knife, so I gave it to him to take with him. Um, and uh, I guess I'll put a little little thingy in the corner, in the corner, so you can, you can take a look at that if you want. It, it worked out pretty well, it was cool. But so there we go, we've got the militaries. So, you know, sticking with size, and that's actually, believe it or not, that's kind of how I have my collection here organized a little bit. Weird, I know. Um, so the matriarch is just, this thing is almost karambit-like, and it is designed, wow, this needs to be cleaned up. It is designed to just shred, just shred. Um, this, there's no utility use for this knife at all. You see that? serrated edge that curves like that it is it, i mean this thing is for cutting through people um or sides of beef whatever why do i keep it in the collection i have no idea um it was at in idaho a gun shop and it was in, in the uh you know the the counter where people have sold stuff um back and i said you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna grab that this and a and a police where is the police? I might as well, since I'm doing this now. I usually keep this, you know, with the Enduras because it's kind of the same size and shape as the um, Enduras. But this also secondhand picked up uh, in the counter there. Um, steel frame, I believe, or possibly aluminum, but I think it's steel. I have magnets around here somewhere. And the police to me is like a, a steel frame Endura. Um, here's some magnets. We'll sort this out. Is it steel or is it or is it aluminum? Oh no, that's steel. That is definitely steel. Yeah. Okay. Now, as you can tell, I I, I don't I don't claim the same knowledge of spider codes as I do Benchmade's, um, but you know. Um, so the reason I picked the two of these up is because the price was great on both of them, and they were in. Uh, Good condition, not great condition, good condition. Most of this wear happened during moving um, and a, a mishap to where they got all rubbed against each other, unfortunately. Uh, but the two of these are, I mean, this is, I could see this as EDC, as carrying around, as using. This thing, unless you're planning on, on going to the Kumite, uh, I don't know what you're gonna do with this thing at all. Ah, the resilient, or resilience. Um, this thing was described by people in my unit as a folding kitchen knife. It's actually, you know, it's a pretty good knife. Now it's Chinese alphabet steel. And, and this, you know, so I, I can't do the resilience without talking about the tenacious. Now I have no idea what's up with this one, but you know, these things, I swear to God, the tenacious, when I, when I first bought these things, they were like 25 bucks, very reasonable price knife. And now they're like $50, which is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, completely ridiculous, uh, for, especially for what you're getting. Yeah, it's a Spyderco knife, but it's what, 8 CR13? And it's made in Ch China. China. Says it right there. Made in China. 8 CR13 steel. Yes, it's a Spyderco knife. Okay, great. But there's no reason this thing needs to be uh, the price it is. Now, once upon a time, I was all excited that they had these, they said these were like limited colors. They're not limited colors. You can find them now. Um, but it, it just, it, uh, yeah. Um, and what was cool was you could get a Spyderco knife for like 25 bucks and have a Spyderco knife. Much like Benchmade had the red class, you know? Um, hear that in the background? Even Tato's upset. You know, the, the going price for, for a Tenacious, though, is utterly ridiculous, in my opinion, and not at all worth it. Not at all. 
There are uh, other companies out there that offer you the exact same materials with good craftsmanship for, for like half the price. But we have that. And then you've got the persistence. If you need just a little guy, same materials, same construction, same made overseas uh, in China and uh, just a little bit smaller. So these kind of all go together in one family as far as I'm concerned. Um, just in descending order of size. Um, now I have done, uh, I have, I've remodeled one of the, you know, way back in the day, back in the early days of Florida, I actually gave away um, a, a tenacious, like with custom scales and everything. And the, the guy who received it was super happy. He thought it was the coolest thing in the world because I made it. So it probably was the coolest thing in the world. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Um, but way, I mean, we're talking way back in the day um, of the channel. But it, it is, it, you know, the thing is, at, at the $25 price, it was a great knife. At the $50 price, you've got to be kidding me. Now, moving into one of my favorite models. Let's talk about the Manix. I love the Manix. So we're going to start with the XL up there. Uh, the Manix 2 with a G10 handle. And that's actually not G10, but it's uh, an aftermarket. It's a, a glow-in-the-dark handle, but this is what the G10 model looks like. And then two of the lightweights because they've made these things in so many different sprint runs and special editions and, and different steel types. They're, they're all over the place. I love the, uh, the Manix 2 XL. Um, it comes in S30V and mine says the cake because the other one, you know, one of, like I said, that Kelsey, she's one of my, my best friends in the world going, going way back. She was the pudding. Um, I was the cake whore and she was the bitch pudding. And believe me, it makes sense if you know the whole story. So uh, we had knives made. Mine says the cake and hers says the pudding. Um, and, uh, but this is a great, I mean, this is a great knife. Full flat ground blade, um, great jimping all around, nice big handle. I don't, I, I, for the life of me, I don't know why I don't carry this thing more. Um, it's a really good all purpose knife. Um, has that really nice spider coal ball lock there. That is, uh, you know, back when the access lock still was patented and couldn't be copied, they came up with a, a really nice alternative to it that works really, really well. It's a very secure locking system. So I really like the Manix too, uh, the XL rather. I love the XL. It's a bit pricey, especially compared to the Manix too, but you do get a slightly bigger blade but, you know, again, it, it is very, there's, there's a certain, you look at a knife and you're like, oh, that's a spider co, you know? And it is very derivative of other spider co's. It's that leaf kind of shaped blade that they do all the time. Um, I don't know. But, it, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. it. A deep carry clip on this, though, would be awesome. Look at that. You have, like, almost an inch or more of knife sticking out over the pocket. I would love to have a deep carry clip on this thing. That would make it just tits, in my opinion. Um, but, so we've got that. And then there's the traditional Manix 2 blade, which um, has a bit of a hollow grind there as the 154 CM version. So this is, you know, going back a ways. Um, the glow in the dark material on this is not that good, to be honest with you. But I got, I bought the, I bought the thing like complete and I bought it from, I believe Arizona Custom Knives like this. Um, and yeah. So I didn't, it's not, I didn't buy a G10 version and then put the scales on. It came complete like this as an aftermarket special. But it also has jimping, you know, it, just like the XL does. It's very comfortable to hold. You know, you can see the size difference here. Um, more of a comfortable EDC size, but my hands just fit this perfectly, which is why I like it so much. Um, the Manix 2 is a great EDC knife, though. It's a little heavy. It's a little heavy, which is why they came up with these lightweight versions. Now, what I don't like about the lightweight versions is that they're riveted completely and all made of plastic, which makes it feel very flimsy. Incredibly lightweight, but a little bit flimsy. But then what Spider Co. started doing is they started making special blade steel versions in different colors. And that's the collectability of them, I guess. You see this one's in uh, BD1, this one's S110V, and then you can tell them apart by the color of the handles. Some of them are barely different colors, as you can see. But they, there are uh, probably, 10, 12, maybe even 20 different color handles out there um, that you can get nowadays. And these are all, you know, made in the USA versions. I also am not a fan of these wire clips. Um, I like 
the regular clip. Now you can buy aftermarket, by the way, aftermarket deep carry clips that fit onto these things. There's no such thing for these wire clips. I'm not a fan of these wire clips at all. Um, and then the jimping that they put on here is just this, you see this little kind of lame molded in to the, to the plastic. It just, I don't know. Some people love the lightweight Manix too, you know, with full flat ground blade and all. I was, I, I got these two cause I wanted, I just wanted to try out the steel really. I like, you know, I like the steel. The steel is very good, but it just overall, it just is such a lightweight little knife. I don't like the, the plastic, you know, in there. It's not even like plastic with inset steel liners. It's just plastic. It's just plastic. And so to pay that much for just plastic, I feel like it's, it's kind of not worth it, but I love the design of, of the Manix too. I, I really do. Um, I think it's, I think it's a great design. I'd rather have feel the weight. I like a little bit of weight, not a super heavy knife, but I like a little bit of weight in my hand and in my pocket, you know, to let me know the knife's there. So that's just my personal feeling. But of the Manix lineup, I love the XL. The XL is awesome. So there we go. There's those four. Now, I think one of the most popular Spider Co's in the world is the PM2. And I'll tell you right now, I don't have any PM3s because I just think it's too small. Um, the PM2 is a great knife. And they came out with several uh, handle additions in the in the standard S30V, and then they came out with some special additions um, in different steels. Like this one again is the uh, M4 from Blade HQ, the natural G10 with uh, M4 steel, which M4 is a great steel, but if you don't take care of it, it will rust. It definitely will rust. But boy, is it a is it a tough ass steel. Um, and it's great. Uh, this one is uh, CTS 204P, um, great steel. But you know, like they, they come in different steels and stuff. Um, and I, I like the size of the PM2. I like the four-way clip maneuverability. The compression lock. First of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna piss people off here, and I think that the uh, the the middle finger flipping with it is dumb. Cause how hard is that? Um, look at that. And that whole cult of, look at me flip with my middle finger. Like, what are you doing there? I, I just don't get it personally. But um, I think that it's it's a it's a good design. It's a nice design. It's a smaller alternative to you know for EDC than the military, which is a big ass four inch knife. Um, I just it's not my favorite. It's it's not my favorite design. I know a lot of people who break that very fine tip. Um, you know, you drop this thing, and that tip is the first thing to break. Um, but the compression lock is really cool. The compression lock is awesome. It's like an upside down liner lock. And it is very easily usable one-handed when you're, you know, these things haven't been out and about in forever. So um, there we go. This is the newest one in the bunch. Um, there. Uh, the fit and finish on them is, is always good. I mean, it's a Spyderco, it's always good. Um, I really love them in terms of their quality. I just, I don't carry them around all that much because I just, there's there's other knives I like better for EDC. But the 204 steel, 204P, that would be my favorite steel that I've ever seen one of these knives come in. Uh, that thing will hold an edge forever and ever and ever. Except Crewware. I think, well, they made a, I had a Crewware once, but I, I did it, I sent it off in a tray to, it was a military, by the way, not a PM2. I don't know if the PM2 ever came, but Crewware steel is awesome. I think that's the best steel that spider co did except for one that i forgot to show a second ago hang on oh i don't know how i could have forgotten about this guy right here because he wasn't in the drawer that's how oh the good old lightweight manix 2 in maximet so this normally has a gray handle but when i started uh, messing around at the shop this was one of the things i i decided i was going to experiment on so this is actually one of the first hydrographic dips i did um, it's a multicam, obviously, and then I mess with the laser a little bit, and you can see that the the printing is not quite perfect there, but um, you know it, it was a learning lesson. And then uh, it's got a a clear Cerakote finish on it that is not perfect either. But I love Maximet steel, and Spiderco seems to be the only ones that use it. I love Max Maximet is my favorite steel that Spiderco does, actually and followed by crewware but it, this this guy has been in my pocket of all the spider codes this one is probably the one that has been carried the most um, i absolutely love this now this the the story of the maximet um manix 2 
I was first sent one, um, at, you know, from a buddy, uh, JT at JT's Knife Life to do a, you know, he was sending it a kind of an around the world, um, not quite around the world, but around the U.S. to different um, folks to, to do their particular thing on. And I did sort of an EDC based hard use test on it, not like a crazy, like I would do with a fixed blade, but just, you know, messing around. Um, and then he sent it from, <clears throat> I sent it back to him and then he sent it to someone else to do sharpening on and everything. But I loved it so much, I had to get one after, after that. I had to get one of my own. I absolutely, this is probably my favorite Spider Co. in the world. Um, not my most cherished, because we'll get to those and I'll explain why, but this is my, I mean, it's absolutely my most carried, my most favorite. And um, the reason it wasn't, it was it was actually in a jacket pocket, which is why it wasn't in the drawer to do with the with the other Manix. Um, so I had to stop and go get it. All right, Natives. Um, the Native is also very popular. <clears throat> and these are special examples. Now, the, the Native comes in just like the other ones, uh, special colors and different kinds of steels and these ones, though, let me explain these ones to you. So Spyderco had a thing once where uh, if you were deployed downrange, um, you could email. They had 500 of each of these made, and you can see this one is Operation Enduring Freedom. This one is Operation Iraqi Freedom. And this one is Operation New Dawn, and I have um, put in my time in each one of those. And then it says on the blade also, we pray for your safe return. <clears throat> you cannot buy, well, I guess you can buy these on the secondary market um, from shitheads, but you cannot buy these. These are not sold. In order to get one of these, you had to email Spyderco from a downrange email address. So, you know, everybody in the military gets a a, a military email address because that's how we do business all the time. Yeah, I swear if the internet shut down, the military would get nothing done. When you're deployed, you get a, a military, a, a, a deployed email address, you know, because you, you don't use your one from back home. You use your deployed one, you know, locally. There is a special email address that you could email Spyderco and your name got put in a drawing. And like I said, they made 500 of each of these. And they gave them out free of charge to the service members that entered. Now the thing is, they, I, the advertising wasn't great on this. I, you know, I, I ended up with one of each. So I, I don't know if like I just was lucky or, or what it was. I, you know, and then somebody actually lost theirs I, I found one um, at a fob, um, and I did believe me. I did try to find the owner. I, I did, um, but I actually uh, I can't remember. I can't remember which it was. But I gave that one to another vet that I knew, who didn't even know that the program was a thing. I mean, years later, I I I, I gave it to him and I said, "Here, you you earn this. Have it." Um, but these were so. These are the the native lightweights, and I don't remember if these are native fours or fives. To tell you the truth. Um, but these are really special to me because, you know, you, you, you can't get these anywhere. You just can't, and I need to clean them up. And what I always wanted to do is put these in a little, in a little shadow box and get them framed and hang them up. And boy, am I glad I didn't lose these in the move with the hinderers. It still kills me that I lost seven hinderers. Ugh, the price value on that is crazy. But these mean more to me than all of those hinderers. Cause you know, I, you can never replace these. I'm like I said, you could probably find some dick on eBay selling it for like a crazy amount, but um, <clears throat> these are these are just absolutely awesome to me to have. And awesome that Spyderco did that. I can't think of any other knife company that put out these special editions just for the people. And, and you know, it's funny about one of them too. Uh, one of them actually, we had already, we'd already rotated home and I got a package uh, you know, one of the, I forgot who came into the weapons and tactics shop where I, where I worked and said, Hey, you, you got a, a, a Ford and mail from, from downrange. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And it was this beat up priority mailbox. And, um, it arrived like three months after we had rotated home. And it was, it was one of these. It was pretty awesome. So these are very special to me. I love these and there's no way they will ever, ever, ever leave. The I really do want to get them framed, like put them in a shadow box with maybe a nice 
red velvety background or something and, and put them up because they're really cool. Okay, so Enduras and Delicas, they kind of go together to me because they are basically, you know, the Delica is just a little version of the Endura. So like I said, the police model to me, and, and you know what, I'll show it again. The, uh, the police is, is very similar to me to an Endura, just like with a metal frame here. Um, these are some of Spyderco's um, nice lightweight knives. Again, expensive for what you're getting to me, but um, not bad. VG10 steel is, I love VG10, and they're, they're very good for EDC. Um, I wouldn't put it through like super hard use, but you can take it camping and it'll go really well. I've seen some really good videos where people show the corrosion resistance of this. This one is pretty cool. Um, look, it's even got the Emerson patent number on it uh, where they license the wave opener. It works pretty well. Um, so I got two of those. This one actually came in a battle box, believe it or not. Uh, this is the full flat ground version. So they sell these, you know, this is the original style. This is how long it's been since I bought one. Now they come in a full flat ground blade, which is a little bit lighter. Great slicing version. This little guy I bought from the little tiny shop at while I was deployed. And when I bought it from the little tiny shop at, it was like 35 bucks. And um, I carried it. You have, see that edge? I, I've sharpened that edge on just a little pocket whetstone when I was bored, messed with it. I've carried this thing around. Haven't you, I mean, I didn't use it for much besides, you know, cutting up an apple or something sitting around. But I mean, I've, I've had it for a while. Um, and it's just, it's always been with me. Yeah, you know, it's people love these things for the EDC size. I wish it wasn't serrated because non serrated, it makes a really nice um, size blade for just general stuff. Um, four way positionable clip. Once again, I don't know why every company doesn't give you a deep carry clip, um, but what else? Um, it's got nice action. I like it. It's just, you know, it's never been my favorite model of knife, and it has that signature. Spyderco leafy blade kind of look to it. But this guy never really comes out and does anything. I don't know. I don't know why. It just, it just is, just hangs out. Um, I always wanted to get the ZDP 189 version of the Endura, but it's like so expensive for the knife you're getting. So I just, uh, I never did. Never pulled the trigger on it. But I'd like to get a full flat ground though, a full flat um, Endura. And just give that a try one day. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. We'll see. The Brad Southerd Flippard is, he's an amazing designer. I love him to death. And this knife is a great Spyderco. Uh, it's, um, it's a lot cheaper than one of his customs. Let me tell you. Uh, I've always loved this knife, though. It feels great in your hand. It's amazing. Um, and uh, it's just, I mean, it's a great EDC knife. It is an amazing EDC knife. Um, I love it to death. Everything about it feels perfect to me. Um, this guy is kind of a Franken knife. Uh, screws have been replaced. I've done, obviously, some custom work um, on it with some anno. I just, right before this, I, uh, I sprayed it down so you can see. I mean, I've had to, I've, I'm even missing a screw. It's just, this came to me in some bad shape. I'm particularly proud of the Anno job on it. I think it, it just really reflects the character of the knife really nicely. And I'm gonna get fingerprints on it opening it up. Um, acid wash uh, with a little distressed look on the blade there. Um, I love this guy. I don't carry it very often, but I should. I just love these two. Um, beautiful bearing system that they picked for these. Um, they're really cool. And then the final piece in the Spyderco collection, I, I, I may have left a few out, but uh, I've been privileged to have um, seen a couple of these from other people. And, and after that, I had to get one of my own. The Smock. This thing is one of Spyderco's finest knives. I love it absolutely to death. Um, it's so cool. It's just so cool. It's smaller, you know, originally when I saw pictures of it and everything, I, I thought it was gonna be a little bit bigger. I think that one of these, about a, a size and a half bigger than this would be perfect, but I love the smock. I love it. It's so, it just, it's the, the shape, the feel, everything is great. So there's there's a few that I'm, that I'm really partial to. 
um, for whatever reason, you know, whether they're uh, special to me sentimentally or they're just really nice knives that I really enjoy carrying, um, you know, there, there are some Spydercos that I really enjoy more than others. Um, it's not my favorite brand, but it's a good brand. It's, I mean, quality is there. It's just the price can be pretty prohibitive for some people. So, um, what brand do you guys want to see next? Um, we got, I got a bunch of CRKTs. I got a bunch of Kershaws. I, I mean, it's going to take me maybe as long as the, the Benchmates to get through those. I got... I got all sorts of stuff. Uh, so you guys tell me what you want to see next. And I hope that this one was as exciting to you guys as, as the last one was. But, um, And I think we're actually getting a box delivered or two tomorrow. So we can do an actual unboxing and stuff. That'll be exciting. So anyway, thank you guys, as always, for all your support and everything you do. I appreciate every single one of you. You are all absolutely awesome. And I will be back again as soon as I can, real soon.